All right, everybody, how are we doing today? So the situation with our arms deal with Taiwan, check out the latest development in that sitch. <clears throat> China says will freeze out U.S. companies that sell arms to Taiwan. Ooh, scary. Uh, this is another one from Reuters. This will be my last Reuters article for today, so don't criticize me too badly for that. China's government and Chinese companies will cut business ties with U.S. arm for U.S. firms selling arms to Taiwan. China's foreign ministry said on Monday, declined to give details of the sanctions and a move likely to worsen already poor ties of Washington. China claims self-ruled and democratic Taiwan as its own, and has never renounced the use of force to bring it under Beijing's control. China regularly calls Taiwan the most sensitive issue in its relations with the United States. Last week, the Pentagon said the U.S. State Department had approved the sale of the weapons requested by Taiwan, including 108 General Dynamic Corps uh, M1A2T Abram tanks and 250 Stinger missiles, which were manufactured by Raytheon, which sounds like the company that would be developing graphics cards for a computer, to be honest. Maybe because it sort of sounds like Radeon. I like Radeon cards. Uh, China said on Friday it would sanction U.S. companies selling weapons to Taiwan, but did not elaborate. The latest deal involves 2.2 billion worth of tanks, missiles, and related equipment for Taiwan. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Gang Shuang said that arms sales were a violation of international law and harmed China's sovereignty and national security. China's government Chinese companies will not cooperate or have commercial contacts with these U.S. companies. I can't reveal the details at the moment, but I believe that this. Chinese people always stress standing by their word. This was stated by someone who is reporting to the Daily News briefing. This was the Chinese Foreign Ministry uh, spokesman, Gang Shuang. On Sunday, the ruling Communist Party's official People's Daily posted an article on its WeChat account identifying U.S. companies that would be vulnerable to sanctions. They included Honeywell International Incorporated, which makes the engines for the Abram tanks and private jets maker Gulfstream Aerospace, which is owned by General Dynamics China as an important market for both Honeywell and Gulfstream. Oh yes, they could hurt weapons manufacturing and we wouldn't want that. Uh, my issue with the military industrial complex aside, this is very bad news. But personally, you know what? Philosophically speaking, as Americans, we have to support Taiwan and Taipei. Because you know what? Their situation is not so different from our situation uh, when we were living under the British. Or rather say, we not us today, not, you know, modern Americans. I mean, the Founding Fathers, of course. We are not them, they are not us. Uh, but what I mean to say is they're in a very similar situation. They're on the verge of revolution. They want independence because their representation is unfair or because of some other disagreement they have. They want to be independent, but under law that's treason, so they have to they have to defend themselves and establish it through violence. I mean, it's no different than what we did to be founded as a nation ourselves. I've said that before, and I'll stay by it. And you knew that China was going to take issue uh, with, the with our approach to Taiwan and selling weapons to them. A threat to their national sovereignty, a threat to their uh, national security. That's what they say. But that's because they see Taiwan as being part of China. Taiwan itself does not see itself as part of China. So that's where that disagreement obviously lies. But is it truly a threat? No, only from their perspective. But when you're looking at it from the outside, it really doesn't look that way. It looks like one country wanting to absorb another. Yes, I call Taiwan a country, because in my vision it is a country. Because it's no different than early America in that sense. Any, any portion of a nation that wants independence should be allowed to establish it. If they, if they don't like if they don't like how they're being treated or being represented by a centralized government, then they should be allowed to leave. To do otherwise would be simply unfair.
Uh, the companies did not respond to requests for comment. Ties between China and the United States are already strained over a trade war, which has seen them levy tariffs on each other's imports. This is not the first time China has said it would sanction U.S. companies selling weapons to Taiwan. China has announced such, such steps at least twice before in 2010 and 2015, but it is unclear if the sanctions were ever imposed. U.S. defense contractors have been barred from dealing with Beijing since China's bloody crackdown on pro-democracy demonstrators and around Tiananmen, Squ Tiananmen Square in 1989. Ah yes, the famous Tiananmen Square incident. While its relations with Taiwan are technically unofficial, the United States is required by law to assist Taiwan in its defense and, its, and is its main supplier of arms. Though France has also previously sold weapons, sold warships and fighter jets to Taiwan. China has been angered as well by the United States allowing Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen to visit last week on her way to diplomatic allies in the Caribbean. She is due to transit the United States again at the end of her trip next week. Now, if you were to ask me if it was a good idea for us to be selling weapons over there, again, we're required to by law. And admittedly, while laws can be changed, uh, what do you think is going to happen if we don't sell arms to Taiwan? Obviously, a very militant mainland China is going to force them to rejoin the rest of the nation by force. When we see an injustice, should we not do something to help? And admittedly, that may sound like hypocrisy in the case of where I like to say, you know, we shouldn't be in the Middle East. But the thing about that is, is that we just make everything worse there. We're not actually helping. We're hurting. Plus our, plus our interests in the Middle East are less than cure. Bottom line is, our government wants oil. And they don't want to buy it. They want to take it. Plus, our allies over there in the Middle East are often very complacent with us in these actions. Never ever forget Iraq 2003. This is a totally different situation, though. Our, uh, our government's interest in Taiwan seems a much more positive interest. Plus, we never put any boots on the ground. We've stayed out of the violence, which is good. We've been very diplomatic about Taiwan. We've had, it seems like we've had more respect for the Chinese as a nation and as an ethnicity than we ever had for any of the Arab nations. It's sort of that sickening duality within the American government that uh, at times literally makes me want to start pulling hair right out of my head. I'm telling you, it'll turn me gray before my time. Honestly, Trump's foreign policy is an improvement over, you know, war all the time. But it's not enough of an improvement to make me happy. But the way we've handled China, I, could, I don't think we, we could have done any better with Taiwan or Taipei. I don't think it could have been done any better. We sold arms, but we didn't get directly involved. We just made sure that we recognized the Chinese government, but also recognized Taiwan's right to possess weapons and want independence. Philosophically, how could we not? What are we? Hypocrites? Anyway.